<coughs> All right, so there's our definition of an array. An array is an ordered collection of elements of the same type. Um, an array variable is like an object variable in that it must be declared and initialized. Um, so let's look at what the syntax is for that. All variables have to be declared. That's nothing special. Um, but it also has to be initialized, meaning we need to create a new array. Um, arrays are not objects. They have some similarities to objects, but they're not really objects. Um, they're kind of their own unique thing in Java. So here's the syntax. Here's how we declare an array. We specify the type of the element first. We're going to have an array of integers. And then after the type of the element, we have a left and a right square bracket that specifies it's an array. So when I read this code in my head or out loud, I read this as an array of ints. Okay, that's, I kind of read it right to left in terms of the type. Um, here's the name of our variable. We're going to call it evens. I always name my array variables in the plural form because they are a collection. And then we have to initialize it. And the way we initialize an array, again, it's similar to an object, but not really the same because it's not an object. Um, we, we still use new, so that's a similarity. Um, and then we specify the type of the element. And in square brackets, we specify how many elements are going to be in our array. So make a new integer array of 10 elements. So let's capture a little bit of this in our notes. The number in the square brackets <coughs> specifies the number of elements in the array. Other important things. When we make a new array, all elements in the array are initialized to their default values. For example, for an int or a double, it's going to be 0. Um, for a boolean, it'll be false. <coughs> for an object, it will be a null reference. So this code creates an array that contains 10 int values. So that's how we declare and initialize an array. Here is the mental model that you should have when we do arrays. And we're going to keep referring to this mental model over and over again. Um, evens is our local variable. right? Our local variables back to our physical model, we have a post-it note labeled evens, just like we do for every variable. The value written on that post-it note is a reference, just like the values written on post-it notes for variables of class type. So the value on the post-it note is a reference to somewhere in the computer's memory. In this diagram, it's indicated by an arrow instead of the actual like number reference, because um, visually that works out easier. So somewhere in the computer's memory is a chunk of memory where there is room for 10 integer values. And the initial value of those 10 integer values is 0, okay? because we just initialized our, our new array. So there's certainly some similarities here with variables that reference objects and the objects being stored on the computer's memory. Um, we still have references involved, even though arrays aren't objects. So that's, that's what our mental model looks like so far, right now. 
All right, so now we want this to be an array of even values, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So let's, let's do that. So we want to set the value of each element in the array to the first 10 positive even integers. Well, we'll add some more notes here in a, in a second, but what's that look like from a syntax perspective? We can use a for loop to do this. So for int i equals 0, i is less than, um, we need to know how many elements are in our array. We don't want to hard code this to 10. I mean, yes, we know it's 10 because we just initialized our array there. Um, it is much better practice to actually get the length from the array itself. So we do evens dot length. And then I plus plus. So let's capture this whole length thing. That's important. Length is used to query the number of elements in the array. We'll use length a lot. Um, potential source of confusion here. When we worked with strings, and we need to know how many characters are in the string, we also use length. Okay? But strings are objects from the string class. And so when we use length, we're calling the length method defined in the string class. So there are parentheses after it because it's a method. There, arrays are not objects. There are no methods that we can call on an array. Dot length is much more like a public instance variable, kind of, than it is a method. So it's just dot length without any parentheses. So Java isn't always consistent about it, um, about this. And it's going to get even worse. But um, so try to keep those, try to keep those straight. All right. So how do we reference the? How do we set a value of a specific element in an array? Um, syntax. From a syntax perspective, it's similar to Python, actually. So evens square bracket i equals i plus 1 times 2. So let's talk about those square brackets. Square brackets, and again, just to be clear, that's what they look like, are used to reference a specific element in the array based on its index. Indices are zero based. Okay. So here is a nice consistency with, with strings. Right? Um, so when we were referencing specific characters within a string, we do it by index, like with index of or char at or substring methods. Um, and they were zero based, meaning the first character was at index zero. Arrays are the same. Um, the first element in the array is at index zero. Um, and we use square brackets to both get and set the value of a given element in the array by its index. And that's why in my for loop, I used my loop variable. I use i, because i is short for like index. Um, so when I'm indexing through an array, I will always use, almost always use, um, OK, not always. But in a lot of cases, I'll use the variable i um, as the loop variable to make it clear like I'm dealing with an index. So, All right. So at this point, our mental model looks a little bit different. Now, our local variable evens, its value is still the same reference to the chunk of computer's memory. But now in the computer's memory, um, where there were before 10 zeros, there are now 10 even integers, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. You may remember at the very beginning of, of the semester, I said how the most challenging concept we have in this course is that of a reference. Um, and we dealt with references from objects and stuff. Now we're seeing references in the context of, of arrays. So I want to keep focusing on this reference thing. 
So to reinforce this a little bit, let's actually print the value of evens. Because that is the reference. So we are going to print the reference to the array. And that's very different than actually printing all of the elements. So let's also write another for loop that iterates through each element by index and prints the index and then a colon and a space and then the value at, uh, in the array at that particular index. So type, compile, run this, um, take a look at the output and see like, oh, there's the reference, that's the value for the variable evens, that's the value written on the post-it note, and then see the 10 elements when we reference them directly. I'm going to compile and run it as well, just to make sure it's working. All right, that looks promising. There's the reference at the top. And then here's our 10 elements. Excellent. There is a second way to initialize an array, which can be super convenient if we know what values we want in the array. So let's write a separate method to create an array of odd integers, um, and we'll initialize the array, uh, this alternative method. So I'm going to create another public static void method called create array of odds. And here we can make a, a comparison to strings. When we make a new string, we can say new string um, and have a value for that string. Um, or we can just say, we can assign it to a string literal, that is a series of characters in double quotes. Um, we can do the same thing with arrays. We can use an array literal. Um, so an array literal, an array literal is defined by curly brackets and comma separated separated there you go. values can be used to initialize an array, but only when the array is declared. We can't do it later. The size of the array is inferred based on the number of elements in the literal. So here's what that looks like from a syntax perspective. So here's another array of integers named odds is the variable name. So instead of saying new int square bracket 10, I can instead do a curly bracket or a pair of curly brackets, and inside those curly brackets actually just enumerate each and every value separated by commas. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19. Semicolon at the end. So that's an array literal. It, if you know the values you want in the array, that is super convenient. Um, it's a very nice feature of arrays. So, to be clear, what's wrong here? Oh, that needs to be a comma. There we go. To be clear, we can't do this though. We can't later say, oh, odds equals one, one, three, five. That's not going to compile. Okay. And in fact, when Java sees that, it's going to be so confused, it's just going to give you the generic 
<coughs> illegal start of expression. It doesn't understand why you have a curly bracket after the equal sign in that context. So that's what I mean by we have to, we can only use an array literal when we're declaring the array. So this won't compile. So let's comment it out. <coughs> As we normally do when we're starting a, a new unit and exploring new concepts, there are certain common mistakes, common bugs that we make as we're learning this, or we make 20 years after learning this still. Um, so we're going to do these, we're going to make some mistakes on purpose uh, so that we'll be better prepared to deal with them when they show up later and we don't expect them. So here's the first one. Let's make another for loop. 4 int i equals 0. i is less than or equal to odds.length i++. plus plus. And we're going to print all the elements again like we did in the previous method. I'll print the index, a colon, and a space, and the value at that specific index. So type compile and run our method create array of odds. And I'm going to run it as well. And when I do, the program crashes. And if we look at the bottom of the window here, we see we have a java.lang.array index out of bounds exception. And I love the detail we get in this exception. Index 10 out of bounds for length 10. So it's basically telling us, hey, the length of your array is 10 elements. So remember, your valid indices are between 0 and 9 inclusive, but you specified an index of 10, you're off by 1. Okay. And so definitely take the time to read the, the helpful hint here, because that now we know, hey, the issue here is that i is, has a value of 10, which it shouldn't. So just to show you visually what that looks like, here's our visualization for the variable odds, which references an array with those 10 elements, the valid indices, the numbers written for each cell, oops, sorry, the values written for each cell are here in the upper left of each cell. The first index is 0, the last index is 9. That's why we get the exception when i has a value of 10. Okay. So two things. Let's add a comment because this is a very common bug that we will run into throughout our programming career. Bounds error. Arrays have a fixed size once initialized. We cannot make an array bigger. We cannot make an array smaller. Okay? Our only option is if we want to change the size of an array, we have to make a whole new array, copy all the elements over. Okay? There's no way to change the size of an array. The index specified must refer to a valid element. Otherwise, an array index out of bounds exception is generated. All right, so that's, that's a common um, bug that we make. 
Another thing that we tend to struggle with in terms of arrays comes back to references, which I mentioned earlier. So sometimes we forget that the value of an array variable is really just a reference to the actual array some stored somewhere in the computer's memory. And, and where this lends us to be surprised or gives us trouble um, is the following. So array references, variables, variables of type array contain a reference to the array stored in the computer's memory. Assigning one array variable's value to another copies the reference not the array's elements. Here's what I mean by that in terms of code. So if I declare another array of integer variable called more odds, and I assign it the value of odds, I now have a second post-it note labeled more odds. And with the assignment operator, I'm going to take the value of the post-it note labeled odds, and I'm going to copy that value onto the post-it note labeled more odds. I am copying that reference. This should be familiar at this point. We, we explored this with rectangles. Um, some of you ran into this with grids in the game of life. right? You had a line of code that was like grid new grid equals grid. right? You just copy the reference of the original grid. You now have two variables referring to one and only grid object. Right? Here, now we have two variables referring to one and only one array. So when we do stuff like this, when we say odds sub 2, oh, a little note about like just how we often speak about arrays. Um, we don't usually say like odds square bracket 2 or something if we're like reading the code. We often, and I don't know, I'll be honest, I don't know why, we say odds sub 2 for the thing in the square brackets. So odds sub 2 means the value of the element at index 2 in the array odds. But we say odds sub 2 equals 6. And then if we were to print the value of more odds at index 2, we're going to see it still prints 6 because we have two variables re referencing one and only one array. So it doesn't matter if we use odds or more odds. They both refer to the same array. Now, we would never really write code like this. Like, why do we need two variables reference the same array? But once we start calling methods that take arrays as parameters, this is exactly what's happening. We're copying that reference. Or once we start working with methods that return arrays as return values, what's actually being returned is the reference to that array. So that's where this becomes relevant. To help you out, here's what it looks like visually. All right. We have the variable odds. Its value is a reference to this chunk of memory with the values 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on. We have another variable, more odds. What's the value on that post-it note? It's a reference to an array, the same exact array with exactly the same values. So it doesn't matter if we use odds to get to the element, the value at index 2, or we use more odds to get to the value of the element at index 2, it's the same array. In our previous unit, when we were doing loops, I I shared that there was one more type of looping structure that we would learn in this unit. Um, and that's what we're going to do right now. It's called an enhanced for loop. Okay. So we're going to write an example of an enhanced for loop. <coughs> an enhanced for loop iterates over the elements, elements in an array. Um, it is similar to the for loop. 
for value in dot 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 structure in Python. So you may remember when we did first did for loops in Java, I'm like, these for loops are totally different than the for loops in Python, right? That's true. These enhanced for loops are conceptually the same as the for loops in Python. Okay. Um, and this is what the syntax looks like. For int odd in odds. All right, so I want to explain like how I read this. So that's what the syntax looks like. It's, we still have a for, we still have parentheses, we still need to declare our loop variable, and then we have a colon in the name of the array. When I read this, I read this as for each odd in odds. Okay, And I choose my loop variable very consciously. I make it the singular form of the name of the array. So if I have an array of strings that represents names, I'm going to name that array variable names. And my enhanced for loop is going to say for string name colon names. Right? If I have an array of turtles, I'm going to name that array turtles. And my enhanced for loop is going to say for turtle turtle colon turtles. And the reason why I'm very conscious about this, and I strongly encourage you to do as well, is that a common source of confusion is that with this for loop up here, the value of i in this traditional for loop is the index of the elements in the array. The value of i in this for loop is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The value of odd in this for loop is not an index and has nothing to do with indices. It is the value of the element. Okay, In this case, it's going to be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, so on and so forth. So it's important to keep these two for loops. They're both for loops, but they behave very differently. Um, and the loop variable represents totally different things. Um, so please keep, keep that in, in mind. So if we just want to print all the values, this is a very easy way to do that. But you'll notice like I'm not using square brackets. And in fact, in the context of an enhanced for loop, I would never use square brackets because I don't know what index I'm even at. Um, I don't need to use them because odd is already assigned to and copied each element out of the array. So enhanced for loops, super convenient, really nice to use. Right? This is so much easier to write than a traditional for loop. Right? Here's our traditional for loop with our off by one error. Right? We don't have to worry about any off by one errors. We cannot get a bounds error with an enhanced for loop. We can't mess it up. It's wonderful. Right? With this convenience, though, come some limitations. So I want to be upfront about these limitations because my advice to you is if these limitations don't apply, use the enhanced for loop. It's much less error prone. If the limitations do apply, OK, you got to fall back on a traditional for loop. So here are the two limitations, limitations of enhanced for loops. And if you have a strong understanding of variables and values and references, these are going to make total sense. So the local variable, variable, in this case, odd, contains a copy of the value of the element in the array. So this local variable odd, every time we have a local variable, we get out a new post-it note. We have a post-it note. We label it odd. What's the value on that post-it note? Well, the first time this loop runs, it's going to get a value of 1. We write the number 1 on the post-it note. The next time the loop runs, we get rid of the 1 and we write the value 3 on the post-it note. Other than the fact that we're copying the values out of the array stored in the computer's memory, that post-it note is independent of the array. 
if we change the value on that post-it note, it has no effect on the values stored in the array. Okay? So because of this very behavior, the first limitation here is that we cannot modify the elements in the array. So if we want to change, if we want to increment all the elements in the array by one, we can't use an enhanced for loop. We got to use a traditional for loop. The other limitation is that we cannot easily determine, keyword here is easily, we, if we work at it we could, easily determine the index of an element. So if we need to know the index of an element, stick with the traditional for loop. Okay? But often, guess what? We don't need to modify the elements in the array, and we don't care about their indices, so the enhanced for loop is the way to go. So here's an example that illustrates um, the limitations. So for int odd, so for each odd in odds, is again how I read that, odd plus equals one. Increment the value by one. And then I'm going to copy this loop from up above just to print all the values out again because I want you to type this, compile this, run this, and verify that the values in the array haven't changed. Right? We can't modify those using an enhanced for loop. Hmm. 